Oh, this car is always cranking slow. Hey friends, it's Len here from 1A Auto. Today I want to talk to you about corrosion on your battery terminals. Why it happens, how to clean it, and also why maybe you shouldn't ignore it. Let's talk about it. <laughs> okay friends, so we've got a battery here. One of the first things that we need to do is make sure we're safe as possible. You want hand protection and eye protection. Anytime you're working on a vehicle, you want it, but especially if you're working around a battery. And of course, if you happen to touch the battery anywhere with the corrosion or any of the crud that you might happen to see, you're definitely gonna wanna make sure you change out your gloves before you go touching anything such as your face or your eyes or any food. Let's have a look at this one real quick. Just at a first glance, I can tell that this thing's in very poor condition overall. I'm gonna carefully lift this up and look at that. If you've never seen corrosion before, that's what this is right here. Something about corrosion that's interesting to know is if you have corrosion on your positive battery terminal, that's due to the fact that your battery's been overcharging. If you have corrosion on your negative battery terminal, that's due to the fact that your battery would be undercharging. So we should probably talk about what causes the corrosion on your battery terminals. Battery corrosion is caused by hydrogen gas being released from the sulfuric acid inside of the battery, so inside of these caps right here. As the gases react to the ambient atmosphere, or at least the air around it, it begins to produce a corrosive environment. Other elements such as moisture and salts only accelerate this process. Typically, battery terminal corrosion occurs on the negative battery terminal, which is a symptom of undercharging the vehicle's battery. Essentially why that would happen is if you go for short drives and you're running a lot of things, such as your wiper blades and your radio and all that stuff, it's putting a lot of draw on the battery, but the alternator doesn't have enough time to fully charge it up. So you're gonna start building up corrosion on that negative battery terminal. On the other hand, if you happen to find that you have corrosion on your positive battery terminal, that's gonna be due to an overcharging condition. Essentially, you're driving down the road or even the highway for a long period of time. The alternator's work, 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 working, trying to charge up that battery. You don't really have a whole lot going on. Maybe you're just listening to the radio. What's gonna happen is if you have a bad voltage regulator inside your alternator, the alternator's just gonna keep sending juice on down to that battery, and the battery's just gonna take as much as it can. It's gonna go, <laughs> what am I gonna do with all this? So looking directly at the top of this battery, I can tell a couple of things. I can tell that this battery's been overcharging quite a bit. The reasoning for that is of course, well, we have the corrosion around the battery terminal, like I said, the positive. Something else that I notice is that there's a lot of crud built up around these vents right here. The reason why you would see that up there is because the battery caps or the vents along here are actually venting out the hydrogen gas that's on the inside there with the sulfuric acid. As it comes up, it's gonna start accumulating along the battery and along all the different areas that are around the area. Once that happens, of course, any dirt or debris that attaches to it, of course, is gonna adhere, and then you're gonna be able to see it. This stuff right here is no good, and you definitely don't wanna get that on your skin. And that leads me to a cool little science experiment that I wanna show you a little later. But let's talk a little bit more about what's going on. So we should probably talk about why the corrosion's bad. Yeah, it's a whole bunch of pretty colors. It's kinda of nice to look at. But aside from not wanting to touch it or lick it or anything like that, there's a couple other things you should think about. Corrosion like this is gonna cause resistance in between the battery and of course the cables that lead down to your important aspects of your vehicle, such as your PCM, your fuse box, your starter, or anything else. Anything that you see that looks like this, of course is gonna cause a restriction between the two pieces, especially if there's a lot of buildup. If you were to follow it along to where it actually goes into the cable, you wanna make sure that there's no corrosion on the actual metal parts of the cable on the inside. If you happen to see any blue or green or red or anything else inside there, more than likely the cable is actually no good at that point, and it's something that you're gonna have to replace. Overall, you'll probably see a little bit of corrosion that looks like this, and that's probably not really too big of a deal just by looking at it, but once we actually take this off of here and inspect it after we clean it, you might see something a little bit different. If for some reason it looks as though the terminal end is actually in poor condition, or maybe even some of it's missing because it got corroded and it just kind of went away, well, of course, you're gonna wanna replace it. Something like this isn't something that you would wanna replace with like a universal terminal or anything like that. If you had to, it would be a good temporary fix to get you off the side of the road, but it's not something that I'm gonna recommend to you, especially on a newer car, something over like a 96 or even anything like that, because as vehicles got newer, they have a lot more computer systems inside of there, and there's gonna be a lot more things talking to the battery saying, hey, give me some more voltage. I need more voltage. Okay, so speaking of older vehicles and of course the universal terminals, we actually have one inside the studio today. Looking at this one, it looks as though somebody decided to use a universal terminal on their ground lead or their negative terminal lead. One thing about these is if you don't tighten up the bolts that hold the cable to the actual terminal, you're gonna have an issue. This might look tight when you first tighten it up, but you start giving a little wiggle and next thing you know, this thing can pull right out of there. Obviously that's no good. 
If this is able to move around inside there, it's gonna make a connection, lose connection, make connection, lose connection. And of course, any of these that aren't actually touching up against the terminal itself is gonna be an area that isn't conducting electricity the way that it's supposed to, so you could find that you have a runability issue. On this older vehicle, it's pretty typical to find people using something like this because, well, there isn't much to it. It doesn't have a big brain. It doesn't have a whole bunch of different computers inside of it. It's just pretty basic overall. The car just wants to run. That's pretty much it. Would I use something like this on a newer vehicle? I would say definitely not. Something else to mention, not only might you have a loose connection using a terminal end like this, but you also create an area where moisture can wick its way up inside this wiring harness here. And of course, that's gonna cause an issue. If moisture comes up in here and creates resistance anywhere along the line, you're gonna have an electrical issue. That's why it's always good to have a terminal end that looks more like this. It's sealed, there's no way for moisture to get inside there, and you shouldn't have any problem because the connection point's right here, and well, that's pretty tight. Having a universal terminal like this, you can see what's on the inside there. There really isn't too much. You would go ahead and put your wire right across like this, and then of course put the cover over, crank it down as tight as possible. Well, that's great, but like I said, not all these wires are gonna be making contact and of course, if that's gonna be the issue, you're creating an area where water could get in there, or of course, you're not gonna be having voltage going through the entire wire as it should. Now, looking at a newer car, you can see we've got a whole bunch more going on underneath the hood. So of course, there's gonna to need to be a whole bunch more going on from the battery. And right here, you can see the brain, you've got all sorts of wires, you got doodad sensors, all sorts of things. Even just the battery itself. So let's take a look under here. This should pop right up. There we are. And even right here, you've got a whole bunch of different power ports that need to be clean. And if there's any corrosion, well, of course, you're gonna have an issue. And of course, we have a whole bunch of fuses and everything under here that's gonna be powering things up. So you need to have clean connections. There's a lot of electrical stuff going on that needs to have the proper amount of current. If you have corrosion, you're gonna have resistance. And something else to mention, if you have a hybrid or one of those Tesla type vehicles, you definitely don't wanna go messing with the electrical system on those. Now we don't only wanna check our terminals on the battery. I mean, that's a great place to check for a connection issue. But of course, if you're having a starter issue or something like that, you'd of course wanna check the cables where they connect onto said part. So on this particular vehicle, looking at the starter, which you can see right along here, you have where your wires connect onto it. Generally speaking, right along this area right here, you're gonna to tend to see corrosion, especially along the actual wiring itself, which will tend to turn green. When the wire turns green, it, there's a probability that it's gonna be green on the inside, which of course would make it weak. It'll have resistance, and then of course, over time, it's gonna fray and break. Okay, so now it's gonna be time for our little science project. Once again, hands and eyes. You wanna make sure that you're safe as possible. Here we go. I've got myself a little multimeter here, and these are great. You can get them at 1AAuto.com, by the way. I'm gonna take two of my prongs here, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come right along the side of these caps. I'm gonna have one on this side of the cap, and then one over on this cap. I kinda wanna see what's going on. We might see something, we might not. Let's take the positive, go super close to that cap, and then I'm gonna take the negative, come right along here. Now looking at that voltage meter, what do you see? That voltage is jumping right on up there. 4.47 volts. That's a lot. When I remove this, there you go. Let's test it right on the battery directly. So as you can tell right there, the battery itself has 12.4 volts. On the outside of the battery, which shouldn't have any volts. Oh, it's going up now. I've got five. Probably if I moved around a little bit, who knows, it might even change. Let's just keep moving around. Not much that way, not much that way. Oh, look at that. That's something. So what this is telling me is all this crud along here that collected the hydrogen gases is actually holding current. So with that holding current all the way out here, it's gonna be grounding out. And of course, it's gonna be putting a constant draw on your battery. If it's doing like this, and you notice that the, for some reason the charge keeps going down, it's probably not an internal issue so much as just, well, you've got some vaporization here, more than likely due to overheating or overcharging, and it's gonna cause this issue. As that happens, of course, the current's gonna keep making its way out into the atmosphere, and you're gonna decrease the life of your battery over time. Let's just step this up a notch. I'm gonna grab a couple extra pieces. We're gonna turn off the lights, and here we go. So now what I did is I took a wire and I went right underneath the vent cap here, and that's just so it's gonna be touching completely up against the buildup that's coming along here. Next thing that I did is I took a little LED light bulb here, and I took one of the ears for the power, and I went underneath this cap, so it's making a contact down on the crud here. Now what we need to do next is of course connect the two. What we want to see is if the light lights up at all. We're using an LED so it doesn't require much voltage, so let's give it a try. I'm going to turn off the light. So as you can tell, we are getting some voltage here. It's not a whole bunch of voltage that's going to light up the town or anything like that, but it is enough to actually light this up. 
So all that voltage is just getting discharged into the atmosphere, which of course is pretty much wasted energy. Okay, so let's get this out of there. And that's just a quick demonstration about surface charge of your battery. It's also a good reasoning on why you definitely wanna make sure that you clean up any of this mess that's on top. And that kind of leads us into how to clean it. Now, some people are gonna tell you that it's okay to go ahead and clean up this corrosion with the battery still in the vehicle. And that's okay, you do you, boo-boo. But my preferred method is to actually remove the battery from the vehicle. The reason for that is, of course, as I was cleaning this, if any of my cleaning solution made its way into where the vents are, that's gonna potentially be an issue where you could neutralize the fluid inside here or the sulfuric acid. And of course, that's gonna be an issue. Even if you have a new battery, if you neutralize one of the cells, you bought yourself a new battery. With that said, we're gonna go ahead and release our negative battery terminal first. Once we've gotten that off of there, we'll take off the positive and then of course the bracket and get the battery right out of the way. And of course, if you have access to one, you're gonna to wanna to use a battery memory saver. The reason for that is because it's gonna help save those radio stations for you, which of course is convenient. It's also gonna make sure that the parameters inside your vehicle's computer aren't deleted and you don't have to basically start all over with your readiness monitors. Also, what it's gonna help do is it's gonna act as a surge protector for your vehicle's electrical system. So in case you happen to take off that negative battery terminal, it drops, it connects back on there, bounces a couple times, connection, non-connection. You don't necessarily have to worry about blowing any fuses and or the brain of your vehicle. Like I said, start with the negative. We'll get that right off of there. We'll set this aside so there's no way it can touch up against that battery terminal. Now we can remove the positive. The reason why we did the negative first was just in case I happen to go like this and I touch up against there, I'm not gonna have a completed circuit because this cable's off. That way there, we don't have to worry about getting electrocuted. If you find that the cable disconnects from the actual terminal itself, or basically they're two separate pieces, it's just a great idea to go ahead and get the cable off of the terminal first. That way there, in case you loosen this up and you try to loosen this, it won't be able to just wobble around. So now that I've got the nut off of there, it's important to pay attention to which wires are here first. If you have a stack of wires on there, maybe they all have different adapters that fit over the top, they're gonna basically go in list of importance. The most important wire, which is probably gonna be the one to the starter, is gonna be the one closest to the terminal, and then so on until the least important, maybe something such as like fog lights or aftermarket something or others. Give it a little wiggle, separate the two. Once you have your terminal off of there, I always like to pull any tape or anything like that right out of the way so I can have a nice clear view of where the wire connects to the terminal end itself. If you see any corrosion leading down into the wire, well then you might have corrosion going down all inside this wiring harness right there. And like I said before, that's gonna, of course, be a very major issue. That's not something that you would wanna try to piecemeal together by maybe just uh, splicing in a separate wire or just replacing a single wire. Generally speaking, especially on newer vehicles, you're actually gonna wanna replace the whole wiring harness, especially if the corrosion's extremely bad. If it's just a touch of corrosion, try cleaning it up and I'll wish you your best. Now we're gonna go ahead and take the battery right out of here and put it into a nice little catch bucket. That way there, when we're cleaning this, we can have something that's gonna keep the fluid for us and then we can dispose of it properly. Of course, with a gloved hand, you're gonna wanna reach down, grab onto it, put it right into the barrel here. Awesome. So just looking at it, you can see that there's a lot of corrosion on here. This isn't something that you wanna get on your hands, your skin, or even on your clothes. What you might notice if you did happen to get some of it on your clothes is over time, you're actually gonna develop a hole and you're probably gonna think you have a moth problem when really it was just, well, you were messing around with some corrosion. Now at this point, what somebody might like to do is just take a nice cup of hot water with some baking soda in it pour it all over the top. Well, that would be great. It would probably get rid of all this corrosion for us. We wouldn't have to worry about it. Like I said, it might work its way inside here and contaminate some of the cells that are in there. And even if you contaminate just one of them and neutralize it, your whole battery's junk. With that said, I'm just gonna take a nice plastic scraper here. You can also use a brush or pretty much anything that you happen to have, but whatever you use, make sure it's not long enough to touch from here to there. Last thing you wanna do is arc those out. I'm just gonna take this, I'll come right along the top and I'm gonna put it right into my collection bucket so I can dispose of it like I said. Okay, so I cleaned up the top of the battery the best I could with my little scraper there. I just wanted to get off the majority of the crud all up along the top. The next thing that we need to talk about is the caps. Underneath these caps, there's gonna be a few cells. There's usually three underneath each one. I'm gonna show you what one looks like real quick. Obviously, if you're doing this, you wanna be very careful not to make an arc, a spark. You don't wanna be smoking any cigarettes or anything gross like that. Let's go ahead and lift this up. If you wanted to, you could take a peek inside there. I wouldn't mess with any of that fluid inside there because of course it is sulfuric acid and it's not something that you wanna play with. But as you could tell, there is a whole bunch of crud all along the area where the cap's supposed to sit. And of course, if it can't make a good seal, you're gonna have an issue. 
So we clean that down. Let's go ahead and get the cap back on here. Carefully bonk it down. Just be careful because if there's any fluid or any of the acid that was inside there, it could come splashing out. You don't want to get it on your skin. Make sure it's secure. Of course, if you wanted to, you could do the other one just to make sure it has a good seal as well. Now there's gonna be a couple different ways of cleaning the top of your battery. You can buy yourself a spray that looks like this and it's basically just gonna say battery terminal cleaner. A lot of times what you'll notice with these is they'll have a little additive in there that's gonna actually turn the acidity of the battery to a different color. So if you have any corrosion or if you have any of that sulfuric acid just kind of floating around, it's gonna change colors so you know that there's an issue there. Another way that you could do it, of course, would be to use baking soda and some nice hot water. This, of course, would be the easier way, and most people have this just hanging around their house, so it's the most common as well. Something to think about it, though, is if I was to put my baking soda in the water, like I'm going to do, and then I take the water and I pour it all over the top of the battery, there's a possibility that some could get underneath the caps and contaminate the cells. So let's just put a little bit of this in there. That's pretty good. It's fizzing. It's doing a good job. I'm going to give it a nice little mix here. So now, just for the fun of it, I'm going to take a tiny bit, and I'm going to put it right on that corrosion down there. So as you can see, that's how it's going to affect the corrosion. It's going to eat it away, and of course it's going to bubble up, and there's going to be some mess that comes flying up as well. So what you can see is the concoction that we made down here with the baking soda and water is reacting with the corrosion that we scraped off the top of the battery, and that's essentially what's going to happen. Something like that's pretty much also going to happen if it made its way inside here. Of course there isn't corrosion in there, so it might not bubble up the same, but it's actually going to just neutralize the acidity of the acid inside there, and it'll pretty much be useless. With our little concoction and a nice rag, and of course, a gloved hand. Just go ahead and dip it right in there. We'll get it nice and wet, wring it out a tiny bit, and now we're just gonna kinda work our way around. What we wanna do is try to avoid the caps as much as possible. If the fluid starts to get up near it or even touch it a little bit, that's okay, but as long as we're not making a big old flood of it coming down here and letting it sit for a long period of time. I'm just gonna wipe this down, try to get it as clean as possible, and then I'll take another rag and I'll dry it off as soon as possible. So now we're just going to take a nice clean rag and clean this down. The whole point of actually keeping it under controlled and using as little as possible of the concoction that we made was just to make sure that none of it got inside here to where the cells are. So now let's look at the battery tray here. If you were to look at it, imagine if we had the battery still in here. We took some of that concoction that we made and we poured it all over that corrosion. The corrosion mess is going to of course make its way down onto here. And then of course it's gonna fill up the tray and just kinda of sit there. What's gonna happen over time, of course, is it's gonna work its way out. It's gonna make a big old mess on the ground, potentially contaminate the environment and or your driveway. Now the next thing we need to do when it comes to cleaning the actual battery itself is to of course clean down the terminals. They might look fairly clean because you don't see very much corrosion on there, but it actually does have a coating on it. You wanna make sure that it's a nice rough surface so that way there your battery terminal or battery end can go onto there. And of course it'll make a great connection. So we'd clean these up and then of course we'll need to clean up the cables themselves. I have this tool right here. You just go ahead and put it right over that terminal end and then of course twist and it's gonna clean it right up. So that's looking pretty good. I don't wanna stop there though. I wanna make sure that the whole thing's scuffed up. You don't want any spots that aren't. Okay, that one looks great. Do the same to the other one of course. Okay, let's clean these down. Same to the other one here. So now if you have one of the terminal ends that can actually come off, of course you're gonna to wanna to do this over a bucket we're going to take that same concoction of baking soda and hot water and we're just going to carefully dip this in there. Here we go. I see a lot of bubbling going on. I can see the color of the fluids actually changing inside. That's going to be eaten away at the corrosion right now. I'm just going to leave that in there for a while, let it do its job, and let's move along while we wait. Now let's go with the assumption that the terminal end is actually attached to the cable itself, in which case you can't just remove it and throw it in the cup of water. I put a nice collection rag down here. This is going to absorb the majority of the moisture. You could, of course, use a bucket of some sort. And of course, we have some more water with baking soda in it. And I'm going to go ahead and give this a dip as well. Now, as you can see, there isn't very much foaming coming from this one. There's a little bit of corrosion on there and it's starting to make some bubbles, but it's not really horrible. If you wanted to, you could try to pick away at it a little bit and then give it another dip. What you'll probably see is there'll be more bubbles. More surface area on the corrosion is more area for the baking soda to react to, and of course you're gonna have better chances of getting off the corrosion. Okay, now let's just do the same to the other one here. Now that I cleaned up the outer portion of this as good as possible to get off the corrosion, we wanna make sure we clean up the inner portion as well. That's gonna be the area that needs to make its contact point on the post of the battery. Let's take a nice metal brush and just clean the inside portion of this. Something that I like to point out is when you're cleaning this, you wanna pay special attention to the wired area. This is going to be the area that's going to be crimped down by the actual terminal end itself. If you can see that there's blue or green or anything inside there, that could potentially be an issue. 
Something else that you could do is just try to wiggle it around and oftentimes you'll be able to see some wiring right behind some tape or whatever that might be there. Just look to see if it looks like it's corroded or it looks like it's falling apart in any way. If for some reason it looks like it's falling apart or it's weak because you're moving it around and it's fraying, obviously that's something that's going to need to be serviced and it's not usually something that you would just want to replace the end, you would replace the harness in most cases. So let's assume that your battery cable looks like this and of course you want to clean it up because you're trying to do the best job possible. They sell tools that look like this, it's got a nice little sanding disc on it and you could of course try to clean this down and it'll be very quick and efficient. The problem with this though is of course if it's air based, it's going to be blowing air out which could in turn blow corrosion at you or anywhere around and if you breathe it in, it's going to cause respiratory problems. If you get it in your eyes, well, you can imagine. Okay. Well, it takes a long time using sandpaper like this but it is very effective as you can tell. I cleaned down both areas and of course the inside areas because that's also where there's going to be a contact point. So let's go ahead and put these back the way that we got them. There we are. So here's what we've got now. As you can tell, this isn't in the best condition. It's pretty worn, but overall, I would say that it's actually in fair condition. Is this something that I would put back into my vehicle? In all honesty, I already have it out. I would probably just go ahead and replace it, especially if I had access to it. But overall, it doesn't seem like it's very weak. Sometimes when you grab these, you can squeeze them and they actually almost feel like they're falling apart because the metal's still thin, but this one actually feels fairly decent. I'm just going to continue cleaning this up so I can make sure I get the inner portion nice and clean as well. I'll get all the contact points nice and clean up along here where the wire goes on and then we'll get ready for an install. Now it's going to be time to make sure we clean all the corrosion off of our battery hold down as well. It doesn't make any sense to clean the rest of the battery but not actually clean down the hold down. I'm going to attempt to use a little bit of this spray just so we can see exactly what happens with it. Spray it on there. You can see it starts to react. The areas that is connecting with the corrosion is actually turning to a nice uh, red. And of course it might change a little bit more colors as time goes on. I'm gonna spray down all the affected areas, let it sit, and then we'll move along. When you're finally done cleaning everything up, it's always a great idea to make sure you clean down your tools. You wanna make sure you get all these brushed ends nice and clean, and of course the inner portion nice and clean. If you don't, what you're gonna notice is they actually start to rot away, and most of them will be missing, almost kinda like this is now. Um, essentially, if I had rinsed this down every time I used it like I should have, I probably would have had a much nicer brush here. Something that I like to mention, if your terminal end was no good and you have a setup that looks like this, where it actually just kind of connects on to the cables themselves, and you happen to notice that the cables themselves were actually in great condition, well then I would just go ahead and replace just the end. If you have an issue with the terminal end and it actually portrays some uh, corrosion going down into the cable itself, well then in that case, you'd want to follow that down and of course replace that whole wiring harness. Now it's going to be time to get our battery back into the vehicle, but before we do that, we want to make sure we have our negative terminal as far away from where that negative post is going to be. We definitely don't want it to make connection, especially at the same time as the positives making connection. Now that we have the battery post nice and clean, and of course the terminal as clean as it can be, I'm going to go ahead and put it right on here like that. I'll snug it up, and then we'll get the cable on there, snug that, that up as well. Tight. Now it's going to be time to connect our negative battery terminal back to the battery. Something to pay attention to is you don't want to connect it, disconnect it, connect it, disconnect it. You just want to go one and done. Put it on there, tighten it up. Now it's going to be time to protect our battery terminals. We just spent all sorts of time cleaning this up. Of course we don't want to waste that time. So if you wanted to, you can coat them with something like this. It says dielectric grease on it. It has to say a dielectric grease. Essentially what that means is it's going to be good for electrical systems. It's going to allow current to go through it as it should. I definitely wouldn't use something like this where it says brake caliper grease because that's not meant for this, obviously. But of course if you wanted to, you can go ahead and use something like this where it says ignition and battery sealer. This is going to protect the ignition system from anything such as corrosion or whatnot. So of course you could use that or of course the dielectric grease, of course. I'm just going to use some of this spray right here. Put it all on there, try to get inside all those nice areas. Any area that corrosion can build up on, I want to make sure that I have it cleaned and protected. This looks great. Obviously, you'd want to put your cover back on there. The reason for this cover is, of course, to make sure that nothing can ground out onto this. Essentially, if you had your battery wobbling around like this is because the battery hold down isn't on there yet, or if you were using something as a wrench or a tool, putting it on top of here, you want to make sure that that's covered. 
Let's go ahead and coat this one as well. Make sure it's as safe as possible and as clean as possible. That looks great. And of course, make sure you put your battery hold down back on there. Okay, friends, so we tried to make you an informational video on how to clean your battery terminals. There's gonna be several ways that you can go about doing it. Some people will just try to clean the battery terminals while they're still connected, or even disconnect them, but still leave the battery in the vehicle. The only problem with that is you take a chance at damaging your battery. The safest way is to, of course, disconnect the battery, remove it from the vehicle, and then commence your cleaning. With all that said, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, go ahead and bonk on that like button for me. It would mean the world. While you're at it, why don't you go ahead and subscribe and ring the bell. That way there you can be kept up with all of our latest content. Thanks. Thanks for watching. Visit 1AAuto.com for quality auto parts shipped to your door. The place for DIY auto repair. And if you enjoyed this video, please click the subscribe button.